so my name is Erin Reeves. I am um, uh, a, a lawyer in recovery. I used to practice for several years as an attorney in the United States, um, but became much more interested in, in the social science of how people think uh, and received my PhD in sociology. Um, and I work a lot on everything from creativity to inclusion, um, but around issues of unconscious biases, barriers, et cetera, to our best way of thinking, whether it is through creativity or through differences um, in terms of how we include other people. Creativity is actually one of the most misunderstood things, I think, right now in, in, in popular dialogue as well as in academia. A lot of people conflate creativity and innovation. They just say, well, you know, you need to be creative because we need to be innovative. Creativity is the art, the science, the practice, of just coming up with new ideas or finding ways to take old ideas and put them together in very new and interesting ways. Um, there is no mystery around it. There's no particular dogma around it, no particular doctrine around it. Um, it's just a way for our brains to think in new ways, uh, both when we need them to, but also when we want them to. The primary difference between creativity and innovation is creativity is almost the primer for innovation. It's the idea of coming up with new ideas, whereas innovation is actually the process of putting those ideas into place. So for example, you can have lots of creative ideas and do nothing innovative with them. You don't have to innovate something by using the creativity. Um, innovation requires creativity, but not everything that comes out of your creativity necessarily has to, has to lead to um, strategic implementation or um, specific utility to something to innovate it. Um, uh, there are lots of different barriers to creativity. Some of them are imposed from internally within us and there are others that are imposed externally from other people. Um, some of the barriers that are internal are one, uh, we have this kind of Pablo Picasso version of creativity definition in our mind minds, right? So if I'm creative, I must be able to produce, you know, phenomenal masterpieces of art or uh, write the next great American novel. So we have this definition internally about how profound creativity has to be, and that can be a barrier for us actually getting into a very creative space or being able to say, well, actually, how do I just take two simple ideas and put them together in a new and fresh way? Um, another thing is, you know, a lot of creativity, if you can think of your brain as a sponge, um, a lot of creativity is about squeezing out new ideas, um, but like a sponge, you can't squeeze things out that never went in to begin with, right? So if you only have um, a very um, sort of boring and uh, predictable drip of things that go into the sponge, when you squeeze the sponge, you're going to get very predictable drip of things out as well. So the more you expose yourself uh, to phenomenal different people and different experiences, that actually leads to a lot of creativity. But the barrier there is that takes time. Um, it takes people out of their comfort zones. It makes people nervous um, doing something that they didn't do before. And so, so a lot of people don't take in all the new experiences that they need in order for them to squeeze out that creativity uh, from their experiences and their thoughts and their ideas. A couple of other ones are, we're scared to death of failure. We're a very success-driven world these days. Um, everything from our egos to our hearts to our relationships are so tied into the sense of seeing ourselves as a success um, that creativity feels like a risk. It feels like, but I don't want to say I'm going to do that or I don't want to try that if I'm going to fail. So the fear of failure also keeps us oftentimes from experimenting the way we need to in order to be creative. There are lots of barriers to creativity. I think there are even more solutions uh, to overcoming the barriers. You know, one, uh, one barrier of especially of feeling this fear of failure, a phenomenal strategy to overcome the fear of failure is to think of things as experiments, right? When something is an experiment, it has the possibility of potentially failing or succeeding. Seeing. So you say, you know, I'm not going to sit down and come up with a new idea. I'm going to experiment with this thing and see what I come up with. Experimentation puts you in the mind of a scientist. It puts you in the mind of an observer. Um, and that actually reduces that riskness of, of a fear of failure greatly. You know, the, the concept of what do you put into the sponge in order to squeeze it out, um, just take the time to do things that you 
you would normally not do. For example, if you say, well, I'm just not a fan of horror movies, go see a horror movie. If you say, you know, the one thing I would never, ever, ever do is take a walk when it's snowing outside. Take a walk when it's snowing outside. Every single one of us has a list of things in our heads that we say aren't us, that we don't do, that we don't like, um, that we can never make the time for, that aren't important to us. And I think one of the most creative exercises you can do is to make a list of all the things you say you're not, all the things you say you don't like, and challenge yourself to do one of those things a day, right? Do something you don't like every day. Um, a lot of people say do one thing every day that, that, that um, you know, that scares you. Uh, I think that's hard, but do one thing every day that you don't want to do or that you don't like to do, that's not that hard and it actually can lead to a lot of creativity. Increase the group of people you talk to, something as simple as increase the news, right, where you get your news from. We tend to be very narrow-minded in terms of where we get our news from, um, but if you switch that up and you say, hey, I disagree with these people politically, but I want to listen to them, uh, the parts of your brain that are required to be creative actually get activated, energized, a little angry, but they get activated and energized nonetheless. Um, and anger is actually one of those things that can make you very creative because it puts your brain on fire. Uh, so enthusiasm, anger, um, surprising yourself, uh, doing different things, all of those, and seeing all of it as part of a series of experiments, I think, really sort of open up your world to creativity, whether it is in ideas that you're trying to come up with, strategies that you're trying to come up with, uh, or just thinking about a problem differently. The reason that people should become more creative is you know, they're, they're both philosophical reasons as well as, I think, personal reasons, right? From a philosophy reason, we all want the world around us to be a better place for ourselves, our families, our communities. And we cannot contribute to making the world a better place if we're not thinking creatively. The world, especially the world today, uh, has crises that old ideas cannot solve, has challenges that old ways of doing things don't work anymore. And each of us needs to step into the space of saying, I will be part of meeting the world's challenges for tomorrow. Um, and I think that requires creativity because nothing you read in a book from 10 years ago or even a year ago will work tomorrow.